Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at SAM simulation, specifically the SA2F or the SA75M. Now, uh, for those of you not familiar with SAM simulator, this is a free program that you can get just by going on Google search for SAM simulator. And it's really, really cool because it lets you see things from the opposite end of a flight simulator, especially the combat flight simulator. So we're going to go to Shuluk, we're going to go ahead and load ourselves up on some high quality missiles. We're going to go ahead and add a radar reflector, and we're going to go ahead and add it in the southeast, which jamming on it. Uh, up in the northeast, on the flip side, we're going to actually give it no jamming. You can see the comparison. Let's go ahead and press the start button and go ahead and get going. So when you first start this, everything's quiet. The only thing working inside this particular SAM battery right now is apparently the stopwatch. Fine. But uh, what we want to do is we want to come down here, and we want to go ahead and press this button to go ahead and start electrical power. After doing that, we're going to swing down here where we can set which arming mode we're using. This is computer mode. This is actual live fire mode. We're going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and enable the switches needed for actually firing the weapons. We're going to leave off on, by the way, this button right here uh, lines the radar and the missiles together. Right now, there's no missile selected because I want to find my targets before I go ahead and turn the missile on. Let's go ahead and take a look for some targets. This is X. There's a little teeny tiny one over there. And this little noise you see over here on the right, that is clearly noise jamming. Let's see what we can do here. Ah, here we go. Unfortunately, we don't have any mark here, but that looks about maybe 75 degrees. Let's go ahead and take our radar, and we'll slew it around. That's uh, 65. Actually, I think tried to point it at 75. Just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and flip on the antenna, which the switch is here is. And then we're going to energize the radar. Now, before I energize the radar, let me give you a word of warning. Once you turn this thing on, everybody with an anti-radiation missile in existence is going to want to take a shot at you. So you want to do everything in your power to get that missile ready before you press this button and let everybody know that you're mean business. So keep that in mind. So taking a look up here, um, you can see that he is actually closer to 69 degrees. Go ahead and reduce. The other thing, too, is this radar is such a limited visibility that it makes it very, very difficult to actually see. It's like looking through a straw. By the way, your radar displays here, the one over here on the left is up and down. The one over here is left and right. You'll see that in just a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and energize the radar. Okay, so there's definitely something right there. Let's go ahead and do the radar in elevation. We're really going to go ahead and do the radar over here in light. I should say left and right azimuth. And then we're going to go ahead and grab right here with the left mouse and place the range gate on this guy. And I'm going to immediately shut this off. So what I've done now is I've selected a target, I've locked the target up, and I shut my radar off. It sounds like a weird thing to do, and it is a weird thing to do if you're dealing with a maneuvering target. But something like a balloon, not really that concerned with it moving that much. Plus, we don't want to tip our hands where we are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to order my missiles to go ahead and be fired up. A click in it to here gives me three. Click in it to here gives me six. Click in it to the uh, letter N here gives me everybody. I'm going to go ahead and be lazy and set it to everybody. So you're going to get these little green lights that are going to pop on and tell you that the gyros inside the missile's warhead are starting to spin up. We can't take a shot until these missiles are totally up to speed. Don't want to leave the gyros running for more than five minutes at a time because they just overheat and stop working. So kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. You know your engagement is soon. You want to have your missiles warmed up. Ah, there we go. So our first missile, second missile, and our third missile is about to be warmed up. We're ready to take a shot. Now here's an interesting misconception. We can go over here and energize the radar again, confirm, yeah, the target's still there, and then fire, in which case we leave our radar on the whole time, which means everybody and their anti-radiation missile shoots us. Or, watch this. I just fired a missile without even having my radar turned on. These are command-guided missiles, which means they have the ability to track themselves without being radar guidance. They have radar fuses also, so they can actually set themselves off when they get to their target. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to let this glide that's uh, 10 kilometers away. Once it gets within 5 kilometers of the target, I'm going to flip the radar back on for the terminal guidance. Against a maneuvering target, a lot of times you can't get away with this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get away with this today because we can. Here comes the missile. Three, two, one. Got it. Radar off. That's it. We check the plotting board. We have a big X, which means we scored a hit on the target. Yes. We go ahead and unlock these two. And now we're going to try to track down our jamming friend. This is a lot less tricky than it seems. Check. Ooh, there he is. Uh, but my radar's off. How come I can see that? 
sending me the same signal my radar would expect in order to try to confuse me. So I'm actually going to lock onto this by raw rolling this guy left and right. Right click, find the other one, right click. Now we're actually pointing the radar and everything right at the target in the air. The problem is, uh, how far away is that target? Hmm, how do we figure this out? A couple different ways. First thing is, we know that he's at 5 kilometers. That's what the we also know by flipping this sucker on that he's, let's see, this is 20, this is 50 kilometers, this is about 25, he's about 22 kilometers away. So we could, oh, that's convenient. Apparently, uh, we're already pretty much locked on that spot. If we actually go over here, you can see that the estimated height is at 5, and we can actually fire without even turning our radar on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. By the way, you want to make sure your fusing type is set to T, which is basically three point. Press the fire button. And the missile is fired, even though my radar is not turned on. I cannot be attacked during this engagement. Well, I mean, obviously, you could drop cluster bombs all over me, but uh, that would be rude. No. But as you can see, I can just go ahead and let this thing rip, and um, it's going to do all its damage because it's basically aiming the missile to the center of the jamming. As long as it has a general idea of how high the target is or how far away it is, it's going to get pretty close. Because these are big missiles, big warheads. So they're very, very effective. All right, we know we hit the target when the jamming stops. Oh, look at that. And the target is destroyed. And I did not even have to turn my radar on. So that's the basics of the SAF. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and engage the target this time. Close, we're going to back to the Engaging a moving target that's jamming with this particular system is a little hard to do. And uh, you'll see that when we do that. So we're going to go ahead and grab a B-52. Oh, that's going to be a pretty high. I'm going to go ahead and add that target. This isn't actually a B-52 I'm shooting at. It's this little drone that has a radar reflector that looks like a B-52. As soon as I start, I'm going to have to move fast. Go. Go ahead and start by doing this. We're going to go ahead and activate all our missiles. We're going to go ahead and uh, open up our three channels. We're going to go ahead and flip over to combat mode. Oh, lost the channel. I'm going to leave that off for just a second. We'll go ahead and flip my missiles over here. We're going to go ahead and check the plotting board. It looks like we have a target uh, 1201. It is way outside of our range. Let's see if we can estimate it is 75 kilometers away. We're going to go back over here. We're going to grab this guy. We're going to flip this all the way down to about 75 kilometers away. Now we need to align ourselves with it. Um, he is at 75 degrees pretty much on the nose. We're going to go ahead and grab this and pull it to just about 75 degrees on the nose. And now we're going to go ahead and give it a quick blast of our radar. Make sure your antenna, by the way, is on. Otherwise, it's there he is! Hey, not bad, huh? Go ahead and uh, lock onto him in elevation. We're going to go ahead and lock onto him in azimuth. We're going to go ahead and lock onto him in range. We're going to track him for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and check to see what our engagement is. When this line hits this line, he's ready to fire. Okay. Stop. Now, I actually have people in my little SAM van here who are tracking that target by hand. Now, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go ahead and flip my missile tracking mode to uh, use what they call a half of a lead. I'm going to come over here and switch this one to half lead. And I'm going to actually I'm going to leave this one on um, three point. I'm going to leave this one on half lead. But this one, I'm going to activate the detonate by command fuse only. Um, one thing you're going to find with this particular missile system is it's very difficult to hit a moving target. Because the missiles will overshoot, they'll undershoot, they'll go all over the place. So it's really, really critical. By the way, when you're on, key is to the left, again, you're using that half lead method. So you're pretty much shooting ahead of the target, trying to hit him directly. When it's on TT mode to the right, again, you're pointing your missile at him at the same time. Notice, by the way, I still haven't turned my radar on. I'm actually going to flip it on for a second to confirm the range real quick. Yep, we're good. Radar. Oh, no! <laughs> you will do that about a thousand times <laughs> when you try to turn the radar on and off. But uh, lucky for us, it's a pretty quick process. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. You'll do that about 30 times, by the way, so uh, don't panic too much. We're going to cheat this time. Okay. So what did I just do? So by hitting the switch to the right, if I've clicked on something up here, it automatically points the entire system towards it. It's a wonderful tool, assuming you have it available. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Let's go ahead and lock this guy back up. Since I was uh, lazy to not lock him up correctly the first time. By the way, when you're um, using the automatic system, make sure you shut it off. If you track it again. All right, we're nice and locked up. I'm tracking him in elevation, azimuth, and 
Delta? Which you back here. Don't push this button. And uh, we're good to go. Now we just have to kind of sit around and wait to actually take the shot. Let's go ahead and get my uh, fusing set. So I'm going to do a lead shot. I'm going to use a three-point shot. And then I'm going to use a three-point shot, but I'm going to use a um, automatic uh, fusing. Actually, not automatic fusing. These are automatic fusing to light off. This is command fusing. It's actually very useful. All right, let's go ahead and speed up time real quick. We'll confirm his range right before we fire. All right, doing. doing. This, by the way, is the minute firing at him. Close. Some people like to fire early, but keep in mind, uh, slow down time. Let's confirm his range. Range confirm. Ooshk. One. Two. Obviously, three missiles is not necessarily very economical, but against something like a B-2 that's maneuvering, you'd be surprised how many is. All right, one, two, three. All right, missiles are on the way. Now, this looks weird, but it actually makes sense. My missiles actually went up, and now they're actually coming back down to greet our B-15 friend. In Azimuth, you can see that they're kind of leading just a little bit. And uh, this guy's obviously, he's trying to pass us. If you look at a radar, he's actually kind of doing one of these. So we're actually having to leave him. I'm leaving my fire control radar on this time. So I want to guarantee that hit the first time. Let's see what happens here. First missile. Oh, we got him on the first one. That never happens. Second one, got him again. And I think the third one's going to get him too. That never happens. All right, three for three. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys appreciated that little scenario. Again, you want to leave that radar off. There's no reason for me to leave it on the whole time, except for the fact I was concerned that he was going to turn or something like that at the last minute. This is a great system. As far as um, how I'd rack them up against everything else, this is an okay starter system. I find it a little limited, not as bad as the SA-3, but um, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see how we did here. I'll go ahead and pull this over so you can see. See, I fired three missiles see the different guidance methods as well methods you can see my first missile missed him by almost 200 meters sorry for the squeak that was terrible we barely nipped him the second one on the flip side a little closer the third one obviously the target was already destroyed at that point so this is not the most accurate system and you're going to have to try to get the all right thanks for watching